or good morning if you're on the West Coast. I'm Kathy Hester and today we're going to make something really cool in our Instant Pots. We're going to make a really easy vegan whole food plant-based chili made with, I'm using heirloom white beans and we'll talk a lot more about that. You can use navy beans, cannellini beans, whatever just works for you is awesome. Um, Sorry, I just got a message on my computer. Yay, Joanne, I see you. I see a bunch of people, hello everyone. So luckily the big error that was on my computer had nothing to do with live streaming. It's a very lucky day today. So um, we're gonna use soy curls, we're gonna use white beans, and we're gonna make basically a white chili. So this is a recipe I haven't made in a couple of years. So. I'm going to talk you through it. I've got it over here off camera. I've got my recipe so I can reference it. And um, I'll talk to you about some of the changes that I'm making so that hopefully when you're making something from a recipe and you look around, you're like, well, I don't have that exact kind of tomato or I don't have that exact whatever, you will be able to roll with it. Marilyn, yay, Marilyn and Joanne are here and lots of other people. So. Um, I don't know. I know there was something weird with Facebook groups and my personal Facebook page when I posted this earlier today. So if you're on Facebook and not on a page, you may have to tell me your name. I may or may not see the comments. You are more than welcome to watch this on YouTube. Just look up Kathy Hester and you should see that it's playing. Um, there will be a replay. So hopefully everything will go smashingly. Awesome! Um, Chan from Malaysia, welcome! Um, so, first off, while I'm talking, instead of just kind of hanging out, I thought we'd start the um, sautéing the onions. And so I'll go ahead, I'm using my fancy Duo Evo Plus because I have decided there's one thing I really like about it, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. I can see your name, Cheryl. Okay, so I've heated up just a little water because I'm water sautéing about a half a cup to a cup of minced onions. Those look like funny onions, don't they? Well, those are, and this is why I want to go ahead, they're frozen. So we'll just chop them up. Actually, I really mince these a lot and it's okay. So one of the things that we've done before, right, is we've done chopping chats with onions where I chopped onions for an incredibly long amount of time. I feel like I should have a trophy back there in my kitchen going, champion onion chopper. But I did get a lot of onions in my freezer. So one of my handy tips that I do is if you get a bag of onions, go ahead and peel them all, chop them all. If you don't want to chop them by hand, use your food processor or your little bitty food processor. Now, you will, you may get some, <laughs> I feel like onion snow is what this is. So this is a little more than just chopped, but you know what? Cheryl hates finding onions, so this will make her happy. So I froze it in a Ziploc bag. Actually, I'll bring it out and show you real quick. <laughs> I'm getting near the end. So <laughs> this was a whole bag full of it. So I just break off chunks. And so the trick is, is to make it thin enough that you can break it. I made this one a little extra thick in a couple of places. But then you don't have to saute them before anything. And then as this starts to kind of get heated up and gets pliable, I usually use a wooden spatula. I think we talked about me doing this with mushrooms too. I do like to take my frustrations out on food sometimes, fair or not fair. Um, and hello, Jennifer, awesome. We're definitely gonna be talking a little bit more about soy curls in a minute. And while this is cooking, we're gonna have lots of time to have the chat. It doesn't cook for long, but it will take a little time to come up to pressure. So, oh, and Marilyn likes my spaghetti monster strainer. I know, it's kind of cute. I got it from Christmas from my friend Faith C, which is kind of awesome. So we're just sauteing these onions right now. And Diane is from beautiful, sunny Northern California. Awesome. And I'm going to mash some garlic while that's doing its stuff. And Vicki says she likes to freeze stuff like that on a cookie sheet. 
let me, let me give it, which is a great tip, a cookie sheet so that they separate and they don't freeze in one chunk. Now, and I do recommend that you do that a lot of times with mushrooms. But in a pinch, or if your freezer is too full, that's for you, Joanne, and me. <laughs> and I love this guy. This is my garlic masher. Let me let you get all up in here. I know, it just sometimes you just need things that make you smile, right? So we're just going to take it, and this is kind of a heavy-duty thing, and we just rock it back and forth. And look at that. I probably only need two of these guys. But again, another way to just make yourself a little bit happier while things are going. But it's definitely best practice to freeze stuff on a cookie sheet. Um, however, if you don't have room for it, don't let that stop you. Don't let it get in your way, right? Um, when I'm doing things that are going to be kind of wet anyhow, like this was Real, actually, I'm going to turn the fan on high. <laughs> I thought I could get away with the fan on low, but it needs on high. Okay, now we'll be able to let you see with the overhead camera without it being all fogged up. But see how tiny? I mean, this is all the next step from pureed onion. It's not pureed, but that's why it works well with this. And so I do that also, um, here we go. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna scrape it. And I scrape it on both sides. And what I recommend for this, this garlic smusher, is that you rinse it right away. So I'm gonna be a good example. And you got, doesn't this look like it's some kind of steaming witch's cauldron? Ooh, it's not, it's always Halloween for me. You guys know that. So I'm just washing up the garlic press real quick so that I won't be sad later on. As long as you rinse it now, it takes seconds. If you let that stuff dry on though, seriously, it can take a ridiculous amount of time. So I've added in the garlic. We've got about a half a cup to one cup of onion. And you can get this recipe wherever you're watching this from. You should be um, seeing the link somewhere. And if not, you can go to plantbasedinstantpot.com and look up chili, and it'll come up. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add just a wee bit of water, just because it looks like it's starting to dry out a little bit more than I want it to. Okay, let's see what else. Hey, Cindy. Oh, and Joanne says it's 90 degrees there. Oh my gosh, it's gotten cooler here the past couple of days, which is kind of good because the pollen is out. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but my eyes are like super swollen from the tree pollen allergies here in North Carolina. So I think I'm going to try and act like a grown up this time. You, I'm gonna, I feel like, whoa. Um, and keep the windows closed for spring, which makes me very sad, but my allergies are acting up and it's just a little more than I can deal with right now. And let's see. Um, Helene is here, yay! Helene, you'll like this recipe. This recipe has no mushrooms in it. And Melanie said, I've been wondering about that garlic masher. It is awesome. I got mine at a thrift store, as most of you can probably imagine, um, but it's awesome. And Cindy, and Melanie, I will talk about a bunch of different white beans, and we'll talk about some of that once we get cooking, um, just because that's when I'm going to have the most time. If for some reason I pass that by, though, will you pop up a reminder again? Um, and Kathy uh, Tierney says, Mmm, soy curls. She probably didn't say it like that, but that's how. And Theresa says the pollen's bad in Florida, too. I know it's sad because I wait so long for spring to happen and all the pretty bloomy things, and they just bring me so much joy. And then, I, like yesterday, I took a walk, and I came back, and <laughs> I took a nap, and my face was all swollen up. So I was like, okay, be a grown-up. 
Okay, my face is too far away. There we go. Okay, so one thing, hey Marcy and Cindy and Diane love soy curls. Oh yeah, soy curls are great for all kinds of things. So, okay, so we're gonna talk about, chili. we're gonna use chili powder in this and we're gonna use some cumin powder. Now, Trader Joe's chili powder, let me see if you can see that is naturally salt free and if we read the ingredients it has chili pepper cumin powder garlic powder and oregano which means i could use homemade chili powders right because this is single it's an ancho and wahilo i'm thinking of sneaking in a little jalapeno pepper powder today because i'm feeling a little fancy that way and then we've got um, a couple other things over here. We're gonna use some oregano, which was also in there. And I have regular oregano and Mexican oregano. And I'll let you guys see that from overhead too. And Mexican oregano is better to use in these kind of dishes. It has, if you have both, what I'd love for you to do more than almost anything. Here, I'm gonna put my carrots in here. I've got a cup-ish of diced carrots. And here's another thing about my recipes. I'm just putting them in here, and then we're gonna put in the spices, and then I'll, then I'll chat a little bit more. Okay, so I've just got some sort of diced carrots. Whenever I say diced in my recipes, I mean rustic dice. Nobody's got time for all that in the world. So we're gonna put, ooh, I left out my garlic powder. Oh, actually, I'm not going to put in garlic powder. I've got garlic in there. So you could use garlic powder instead if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and use this pre-made chili powder. And I often call this chili for the stew powder because it's got different things in it. We're going to put about one and a half teaspoons. And you can smell the cumin in there. And you can smell it kind of we're going to add a little bit of extra cumin in here. I had originally said one and a half, but I think I'm only going to put one in there for now. And I want you to notice this. One of the things I do whenever I'm cooking slow cooker, instant pot, anything, any spices I use, I put over to the side for readjusting. That's super important. Okay. Now you have to smell it. Oh, it smells pretty good. Now, I am going to also add in, I'm trying to decide which chili pepper I want to do. So all you have to do is smell them together. Because I don't know which chilies were in the Trader Joe's already. Yeah, ancho is what I want. So what my nose told me, it went, hey, this adds something to it. It doesn't blend in, but it tastes nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon of ancho chili powder. And then I brought out all the jalapeno powders. And I'm gonna put about a half teaspoon, well, quarter teaspoon of jalapeno powder. And with the green chilies, it should just kind of help that green sort of flavor which is what I'm looking for. Smoky extravaganza. And notice on this um, Evo Duo Plus, they're handles. I'm cooking in the fancy Instant Pot. Now, all the Evos tend to have, are quick to get a burn notice. So I tend to do more soup stews in here than I would like grits. Grits would be a losing battle a little bit. So I'm going to also turn this saute off for now. And we always have to turn off the saute before we can go ahead and go to the next step. So I'm going to put about, need to add just a little more water in here. I'm going to add about two and a half cups of water. This could be bouillon, okay? All right, and then I'm going to put in, these are my soaked 
fancy, fancy um, Rancho Gordo beans, which are, they're like runner beans. They're just white, so they are big. But they are significantly bigger than <laughs> when they were dry. <laughs> it's a lot. So these are super meaty, toothsome beans. And you don't need to be using these beans. Why am I using these beans? Because they were needing to be used. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put these in. We're not going to put our tomatoes or anything like that in there yet. And we're going to save our oregano for later too. And that's just going to, we're going to let these kind of soak up and do their deal. If I put acid, and different people say different things. However, beans are a variable in and of themselves. I don't want to add acids and salts when I'm going ahead and doing this. So I'm going to put also about one and a half cups of dry soy curls. That one's also a little, I had a couple of burnt ones in there. You could tear some of these up if you want or leave them big and if you want to later. I'm going to go ahead. I'm trying to decide if I want to add just a little extra insurance water, but let's just see what happens. We'll live on the edge because I don't really know if the beans are going to be done until after we check it. And if there's a burn notice, eh, I'll do a little more water just because I'm using the Evo. So I'm going to add an extra like quarter cup and I can always cook that off later on. So it's my security blanket. Okay, we are going to cook this for 15 minutes. And as soon as this starts cooking, we'll have way more time to talk. So I'm going to hit pressure cook, custom, and then go to 15 minutes. I'm even going to say 16 because I did say to let the pressure release naturally. So I could even go a little further, but that's okay. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. And then once it's done, we're going to check the beans, see if it needs to be cooked longer or not first. Then we'll add in all this stuff. We're going to be adding in diced tomatoes and green chilies and nutritional yeast. So let me grab that. Do you guys ever read ingredient lists and just go, how did I miss that? That's me today. Another thing too is if you wanted to cook this, you could cook this with a bouillon as long as it's salt free. So if you guys are on YouTube, I have um, a video about how to make the dry bouillon and the wet bouillon. And we can talk a little bit about that too. So let me see what all I've missed because we got time to chat now. All right. Oh, and Theresa said she's been wanting a great white bean chili recipe. Excellent. Marcy, good to see you. Cindy, pollen is bad in Louisiana too. I know it's so sad just because it's always right when I want to go outside. <laughs> Cindy says, love your recipes. Can we borrow your nose? I don't think it's anything special. I think you too can smell these things. I think when I'm doing spice blends, maybe then I have a little more nuance but you can easily smell and see if two things are together. Just think about high notes, middle notes, and darker notes when you smell and you'll start to smell them. You'll, it's like 3D smelling. How's that? Um, and Marilyn and Joanne are using cannellini beans, which are perfect. You can even use navy beans, great northern beans. Um, in the Great Vegan Bean Book, I often say white beans because there's 80,000 heirloom white beans and you know, almost all of them can be substituted for one another, too. Okay, and here we go. Hi, Stephanie. Marcy said, did I thaw and soak the soy curls first? So I didn't thaw them. Um, I didn't have them in the freezer, but even when I have them in the freezer, they are just dehydrated smushed soybeans. So no, I never thaw them. And I did not rehydrate them they get rehydrated in the water as the beans cook. 
So that's part of what happens here. So you are putting the dry soy curls in. Now, just be mindful. It, it depends on a recipe. So like I did a class a couple of weeks ago, my North Carolina barbecue class. I also do not reconstitute my soy curls before I use them there. It comes from vegan slow cooking for two. I actually take the dry soy curls. I make an extra watery barbecue sauce. I put it in the slow cooker. It's a little bitty slow cooker and it just cooks all day and reconstitutes the soy curls. So A, yes, you have to reconstitute them before you eat them, but you can choose if you reconstitute them using your cooking method or you um, either soak them in warm broth or usually if I'm doing something for the air fryer I'll just take uh, my kettle get some hot water and then I press most of it out and I put a lot of flavor on the outside so hopefully that makes sense Marcy um, and Marilyn said I sort my oh this is awesome um, let me put that up Marilyn sorts her soy curls in minced one inch and whole and because she buys a 12 pound box and Joanne is the one who tipped her off on that. I love that a lot of times. And actually you can kind of see, actually, let's see if we can't see with the overhead cam. There we go. So you see how some in the bottom are much more squishy. Sometimes I even um, will go ahead and mash them some as well. Oh, hey, Karen. It's awesome um, to see you. Oh, and Joanne says she thinks also I have a great nose. Thank you. Thank you all for enjoying that. But seriously, well, and you know what? If it really is me, then you got my recipes. So therefore you have my nose. Now I do tweak things every time I make them depending on, you know, like did I just grind that cumin powder? Because whoo, then maybe I need to cut that back a little bit. Or is it older? Maybe I need to add a little more. That's where smelling and tasting will get you really far. Um, oh, hello, Deborah. Got home from Trader Joe's. Ooh, it's always so exciting. I went the other day. Actually, I have some flowers in the house because I treated myself there. Um, okay, awesome. Let's see who I would and uh, Marilyn stores most of hers in the freezer talking about soy curls some in the fridge and some um, vacuum sealed in a mason jar and it kind of depends if it's winter I keep the house pretty cold so I'll leave them out I have some in the freezer right now and some that aren't in the freezer so I'm just trying to make sure yeah it's sealed oh Deborah. Deborah says, nice haircut. Thank you. This is the Cheryl special. She even shaved my neck, y'all. <laughs> now I never have to go get another haircut ever again. She does. This was the first one, and we didn't know what was going to happen, but I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and Elizabeth says, I'm glad you're doing this, res this video. Just mentioned this recipe at our potluck. And um, Elizabeth, if you want to, if you want some people to follow along at your um, plant pod, go ahead and put that um, where they can find you in the comments. Elizabeth runs a whole food plant-based plant pod in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and she does lots of cool things. So definitely keep an eye out for her. And she's a sweetie, which counts a lot. Oh, and she said that her and Deanna go in on the big box too. Oh, and Deborah's never tried soy curls before. Do I teach tweaking? So, Cindy, there for a second, I read the comment. I didn't see it was you. And I was like, is this a troll? <laughs> I thought it said twerking because I was like, I oh, know. No, thank you. Middle-aged lady here. But tweaking, absolutely. Absolutely, I will teach you how to tweak things. And that's what's good about you know, when I do the lives, if you take live classes with me, because, you know, even when I do my classes, sometimes I'll develop a recipe so you can see the process of that. And I think it's really important because, you know, it's, it's easier for me, but I was actually just going through all of my classes from the past few years and realized that I've done like 120 recipes. 
Plus during that time, I wrote two books with like another 150 recipes. So I make a lot of recipes. And just like everything else, the more you practice, the better you get at it. At least one hopes. And you, Stephanie, you can find soy curls on Amazon. You can also get them directly from Butler Foods. So either of those will work. Um, I think you can get a little, you get some treats if you get them from Butler's. I usually get them from Amazon because the shipping's free and they get here pretty quick. Um, if you're in the Pacific Northwest or near a vegan grocery store, you can often get them there. And I've heard some places in Canada have them, but don't hold me on that because I'm not sure exactly where in Canada, but if any of my Canadian friends want to chime in, I'd love to know. Hello, Mary Allen and Sophie's here. Yay. And Joanne has a big bag in the freezer and a smaller package in the kitchen freezer. And that's a good way to go. Um, soy curls. So some people are, if you're, if you're not allergic to soy, you're good to go. These aren't organic, but they are non-GMO. And the only ingredient is whole non-GMO soybeans. So what happens is they cook these guys, squish them, and extrude them. That's it. And it makes it look like TVP, only it's a cleaner product than TVP is. So that's why a lot of people in the whole food plant-based community kind of shy away from TVP, but they're a little more okay with soy curls. If you didn't want to use soy curls, what could you use? Give me just have a, have a drink and a thought. You know, you can do extra beans and just leave it like that. If you, because I'm like, if you don't want to use soy curls, you could use something if you're okay with using like, um, like a Jardin chicken strips. The um, scallopini is gluten-free, so you could cut that into strips or something like that if you wanted to. If you use seitan, you could put seitan in there. We could crumble in tempeh. Actually, probably crumbling in tempeh would be a really neat chili thing. I would probably steam it first, then put it in. And we might need to up some of these spices too, especially if our tempeh was a little bitter. So, so that should help. Um, okay, awesome. And Mary Ellen said, I tried soy curls, but must not have done it right because they turned out spongy and soggy. Okay, awesome. So if you go to healthyslowcooking.com and up at the top go to air fryer recipes, you will find my southern air fried soy curls. To me, that's a good way to start. So I reconstitute them. So they are a soggy mess. And then I'll, ta I'll take them and put them in a colander, right? And I'll take something like this and I press, 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 press until they are mostly dry. They're not ever gonna be all the way dry, so you don't have time for that. But you want them to have enough moisture on the outside, and then actually I shake them with a mixture of poultry seasoning, nutritional yeast, you could use a little fine ground cornmeal or flour. I usually put a little bit of, I think I said nutritional yeast, and a little Cajun spice in there, and you could put some salt or salt substitute, mix all that up, toss them all up, shake it out good and put it in the air fryer for about five to nine minutes you know probably more like they'll probably be done within eight to ten minutes they're delicious a little bit of crispy you can let them cook a little bit less and let them be more um, toothsome and less crunchy or you can go ahead and go for the crunchy part so that's where i think so like here we're using the soggy for the power of good just like in um, gumbo, we're using okra slime for the power of good, right? So the soy curls are going to soak up some of those nice spices and cumin and all of that. And then since we're making a stew, it's kind of okay. So hopefully that will help. Hey, Susan. Yep, up to pre it is up to pressure, and we are counting down. We are at 13 minutes. And if we, um, ooh, I've got, 
I've got powders over here. And let's see. Elizabeth says she loves the southern um, soy curl, southern air fried soy curl recipe. You say that three times fast. Um, it is, it's one of my favorites. And here's the thing. You can make this, if you're just like having one of those days, and I've had a lot of those days lately, where I just need some comfort food, make some nice oil-free mashed potatoes. <laughs> Have a bowl, make some greens, layer that in, layer these air fried soy curls, and then you can make my oil-free gravy. It's delicious. It looks like a KFC bowl that would like kill you tomorrow, but yet it's all okay to eat. So definitely try some things like that. Okay, great. And, and Mary Ellen, you'll probably see here, we'll see how this looks. And maybe this, maybe you won't like them in soups or stews, but you'll like them more if you cook them separately and add them to a salad or top something with them. And it's okay to have it either way. Yes, Marcy, you are watching from Facebook and you are not seeing all the comments. They are all over the place. So she, you're saying, are they on YouTube? This should be streaming to four or five different places. So it's streaming to at least three places on Facebook and one place on YouTube. If everything worked out correctly, it could be even streaming a couple more places. Facebook had a hip, hiccup today. So you won't see all the comments, but I really do read all the comments out to you. So hopefully that helps, but you're welcome to hop on over to YouTube. I welcome you to come subscribe to the channel for sure. Um, okay, so I know we were gonna talk white beans. So let me go back and find the white bean. Can we talk about the, is there a rule of thumb about which ones are best for certain things? So let me, I'm gonna get out the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot, my first um, Instant Pot cookbook. And I'm gonna look up the bean chart. 67, here we go. So from the great vegan bean book, I kind of think of things as like quick cooking beans, in between beans, and really long cooking beans. So, Sometimes the in-betweens are pretty darn close to the long cooking ones. So like quick cooking ones are beluga lentils, French lentils, the tiny ones. Then next up are kind of brown lentils, red lentils, split peas, anything that's split usually cooks much faster except for chana dal, which is a split chickpea. Um, in-between cooking beans are usually kind of like azuki beans, black eyed peas. On the cusp, of the two of the two are kind of cranberry beans, lima beans, navy beans, pinto beans. Um, and I'm calling long cooking cannellini, black beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, soybeans, and really soybeans are in their own long cooking category. So I'll let you guys just see that real quick. Can you see that? Let's see. Will it focus in enough? I don't know if you can see that very much at all. But I did just read it out loud. So a lot of times the bean I use is the bean I have. So I use, I think it was, what were the names of the beans that I used when I made this? So I'm in the Rancho Gordo Bean Club. So I get a lot of unusual beans. And the ones I use in the recipe are cab. cab Caballero, Caballero beans. And Joanne, I know you wrote that out for me and I'm seeing it like flash in my head like some sort of like nightmare. Um, I think it's Caballero beans. And those were really big. And that's with a picture that you saw that you clicked on to come see this, right? Hopefully you saw that and got a reminder. These also are beans that I don't typically have a recipe for. Now, I done other runner beans. I've had black runner beans, scarlet runner beans is super um, common in like people's gardens because they do those beautiful trellis. They make those beautiful red flowers. Then you can eat the beans like green beans from it, or you can wait and let them mature to giant scarlet runner beans. And those are all big meteor beans. So they do well as kind of being the protein 
And by that, I mean not just adding protein to the meal, but kind of feeling like, oh, I have something hearty here. So that's why I was looking through my giant <laughs> containers full of beans, and I thought these this would be a really good match. Um, I did pull out some different kinds of cannellini beans. There were some other beans. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a general rule of thumb. If I'm doing something that needs to cook quickest, I'm going to use the navy beans. If I don't care any other beans, I am not a super fan of lima beans. I want to be a fan of lima beans and I'm working on it, but it's just, they just don't make me super happy. Um, but there's no reason you couldn't do lima beans or make a succotash with lima beans. You could use beans because it's the traditional bean to be used in a recipe. Or for instance, I have some Mayakoba beans soaking. I'm going to let you guys see these because I'm going to make some refried beans to put in the freezer. I think that's going to... So I'm actually going to make some refried beans with these. These aren't necessarily what are the Tex-Mex tradition. So, but they're really good. And I get mine at the Hispanic store, at the Latin American grocery. And I cook it with lots of Mexican oregano. So these are a cumin-based refried bean that I use. But they're so creamy. And depending on where you get them, if you got them on Amazon, they're ridiculously expensive. I would say do not get those. Just use whatever white bean you have on hand or use some pinto beans. Use something less expensive. But if you can go to the Hispanic grocery, they're not very expensive. So that's how I make some of my bean choices. So let me know. Um, if that helps at all. I know what you're probably wanting me to do is to make a chart of what you should use what for, and I'm the worst person for that because sometimes I'm like, I have a quarter cup of six different kinds of beans. I think I'll make a soup to use them up. So I don't really, I might think, okay, this one's gonna cook faster than that one, so that's gonna make kind of the broth part, make the broth thicker, this will be in the broth, and just try and think through it that way. Oh, and um, you know, if you look up Kathy Hester on YouTube, you can find me. I always forget what it, it's probably like Kathy Cooks Vegan, but I can look real quick. We have all the time in the world, right? Do, do, do. Give me my channel. It is Kathy Hester Vegan Recipes. So that is the name of the YouTube channel. Okay, and let's see what we got here. We got that. I do, Elizabeth, I do have videos. I have all kinds of videos. You are watching on Facebook. Wherever you are watching this from, you should be able to find others by looking in the video section. I can't tell if you're on Healthy Slow Cooking, Plant-Based Instant Pot, or another place. Um, but yeah, there's videos there and there's videos on my YouTube channel. A good amount of videos. I went live every day in December on top of other stuff that's there. Um, and Mary Ellen said, Mary Allen, I'm sorry, I have a friend called Mary Allen, and I apologize if I mix, you, mix the names up in my mouth, that she has the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot, and you probably have the vegan slow cooker is the most popular one. You might have vegan slow cooker for two. And Elizabeth is saying, I have a power pressure cooker. Can I use that instead? Absolutely, you can use any kind of electric pressure cooker to make this. Now, if I remember, the Power XL may have some specific, if you can do a custom and cook it for 15 minutes on high, then you've got this. If not, then you might be able to use a bean setting. I'm not super familiar with all the controls, but um, if, you, if you can look on yours and tell me what the options are, I can probably help you guess for sure. Um, 
Ooh, and Marilyn said her husband thinned out our rutabagas and wanted to know if we could eat the leaves. I Googled that they are edible and I'm going to serve them with the chili. You go. I love that. Those would be awesome in Christopher's Crunch. Now I'm jealous. Marilyn, one day, one day we're all showing up at your house for a dehydrator lesson and to help you clean up your garden. <laughs> Aha. Beautiful question, Cindy. What do you do when a long cooking bean doesn't finish in the Instant Pot? How do you finish cooking them? We may get to see that with our very own eyes is what I'm thinking. Um, so one thing to do, so what will happen is when this is done, I'll take two spoons. I'll take the bean, put it here, and I twist and squish. If, especially a large bean, if it just comes into two halves that are kind of solid, that's not cooked. And it's not gonna kill you, but it's gonna hurt your stomach. It's really not good to digest. It's very hard on your stomach. You always wanna cook your beans fully. So what I would do, and in this case, with this Instant Pot, I'll probably end up putting more water in, setting it for another five to 10 minutes. And that could happen today. Because like I said, I've never made these beans before. They're a mystery. I'm just assuming they'll probably be pretty close. I'm also not letting the pressure release naturally because we're hanging out. So I'm also suspecting that will make it not be cooked all the way. And I'm okay with that. Now here's, here's the chime that you can't do that. So that's what I do 90% of the time. Possibly throw a little more water in if needed. And because it has to have enough water to get up to pressure. So like with the soy curls, we're not going to have much extra water, I suspect. But I have a split pea navy, be split pea navy bean soup. So if those navy beans are old, the split peas have become this thick, thick puree, right? So if I take one of those navy beans and try to open it and they don't open, I can't bring that back up to pressure in the Instant Pot because there won't be enough liquid. It would be really hard for me to put, I'd have to put a lot, a lot, a lot of water. So what I do at that point is I turn it to um, saute, add some, I'm going to add some more water for sure, turn it to saute and put a pot lid on top of it and just let it cook as if it was on the stove. So that's what I would do if it's in some kind of thick puree situation already. So hopefully that helps, Cindy. And Stephanie, are the Rancho Gordo beans organic? They do not say they are organic, so I am assuming they are not. Oh, yeah. You would have to do some more research. Um, like these beans are from their their special pro project in um, Mexico that helps save their indigenous beans. But it doesn't say they're organic. So I don't know if they, you would just have to research it for sure. I love Rancho Gordo heirloom beans and I love what they do. So I'm okay if they're not organic personally. But if you're not, totally get, you know, I there is another heirloom bean salesperson that does organic, but I can't think of it at the moment. If anybody knows, if you'd put that in the comment, I'll read it out to everybody. Sorry, my allergies are making me so thirsty. Okay. Yeah, and Joanne's saying, you can just, if you're looking for me on YouTube, if you just search Kathy Hester right now, I'm, I seem to be the only game in town for now. Oh, and I love this. Marilyn keeps a little um, mason jar, just put the little ends of the beans in. And sometimes I'm just like, go ahead and go in there. Like if it's a cup and a quarter of carrots, I'm not going to pull that quarter cup back. I'm just going to put them in there. So that's the kind of crazy person I am. Oh, and Mary is okay. Okay, awesome, Mary. Thank you for letting me know that. So I'll let everybody see that. And Cindy says, how do you know when a dry bean is old? 
Some beans in some stores cook slower, absolutely, or don't cook at all. All right. <laughs> this is what's hard, so you can't know. You know, and sometimes I've had things for much longer than I should, and they've cooked okay, which is kind of awesome. Um, I've got, I'm going to get my recipe back up real quick. Okay. Um, you don't know how long they were in the store before you bought them. You don't know how long they were in the back in the storage area before they got to the front of the store. You don't know how long they were stored at the warehouse. You don't know how long they were stored at the grower's warehouse. You don't know how long it took them from picking to go to the storage. So you just can't know. So like Rancho Gordo does put like use by date. So these are supposed to be used by this month. So by tomorrow. That doesn't mean the beans go bad and you should throw those beans out. No, 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 no. What it means is you might have to cook them longer. You might have to soak them longer, something like that. If it's a bean that I don't know, I try to cook it soaked. I have a variety of soaked bean and not soaked beans recipes. So if you come across, this one is for soaked beans. And you guys ho hopefully saw in the little spiel that if you didn't soak your beans last night, you could just cook them in the Instant Pot for eight minutes, discard the water, rinse them, and then start as if it was soaked. Same thing as old timey, um, how my mom used to do is you just bring the beans to a boil on the stove in lots of water, take them off the heat, let them sit for about 10, 15 minutes, then start as if they were soaked. But Cindy, there's no good answer and that's why I say 80 bazillion times the beans are the variable and because we just can't know. And even um, sometimes I've gotten some beans that Steve from Rancho Gordo will be like, hey, I'm sending you new beans because these just aren't cooking up. They're not old. Weather conditions can change a bean, <laughs> right? So, and that's why we're just never going to know exactly what's going on. Um, and that's why it's better for us just to learn what to do when things don't happen as we expect them to than try to make those beans fit in our little box. And I know Joanne's saying it too. And it is true with, as far as the organic certification, at least in Durham, North Carolina, and actually I'll let you guys see this because this, I do kind of like this pressure release on this one. It's just this. And also this actually kind of makes a finer mist. See how fine that mist is? And I'll move it where it's not, oh, it smells good. And so I can, this doesn't get water everywhere the way a lot of them do. And that's one of the reasons I chose to use this one today, so I could release the pressure with, with less mess. And, I, and also this thing comes off and I could, I got the thing where you put some ice and water and you can help it cool down to also drop pressure faster. I haven't used that yet. Maybe we'll use that in April. And so as Joanne, Joanne knew what I was going to say because I say it all the time. And I had one guy get really mad because he's like, you should just say beans can't be cooked in the Instant Pot if, if it's not really going to be 10 minutes till they're done. And I'm like, I wish I made beans. I wish I was that fancy that I could just make beans, but I didn't. So... You know, and there's no reason. Cooking on the stove, the reason people are okay about it is they think they're not doing it twice. You might be cooking them twice as long, but they're on the stove. You just might have to cook them twice in the Instant Pot. And we're all golden. It gets easier. Oh, awesome. And um, Diane says, she, she also typed in my name to come over there. You know, Mary, the, I think there's a two, last year there was a two-year waiting list to get into the Rancho Gordo Bean Club. And I'm trying to remember, I think we get, I think it's like $60 a quarter. It's a quarter, not a monthly club. And Joanne, I think you just got in. So if you remember, will you tell her? 
because I just don't notice anymore because I've been in it for so long. It's just, and then you get like four beans, sometimes a special thing like popcorn and a spice. I got, um, in the last one, I got this really nice jar of turmeric. Oh, and it's not their term. I wondered about that. I didn't look at the label till just now. It's um, burlap and barrel turmeric. But I've gotten things like, that's the Rancho Gordo Mexican Oregano came in my box. The difference between the Bean Club versus some other things. Okay, I'm going to check this. And this one has handles back here handle or cover holder I think that's so let me get over here hello there we go all right so you can see see how these soy curls are all reconstituted just fine Ooh, I see some bean covers coming off but so with this one I think I'm just going to take it see look that tells me it's done. Okay, let's find, let's, mm. yeah. See, this one does not look done, but I think this may be the only one. So I'm gonna set it to the side for a second, put it on my cutting board. If I see more of those, sometimes, there's, there's a second one. If I see a bunch more, but no, it's only those, nope, three. I'm gonna leave them, I'm gonna take them out. <laughs> I'm gonna try and decide what to do, oh no. There's a fourth one, okay, so we're gonna cook it some more, so I think I'm gonna put them back in. There's just like four beans in there that are a little bit under. But we've still got some more cooking to do. Okay, so now let's, let's see, I'm reading the rest of the recipe, I'm doing what I tell you not to do. So it says you can puree stuff in there so we can get everything pureed, or we can decide not to do that, which I think we're going to do. So I use some, some tomatoes that had lime and cilantro and it was a 10 ounce can just like these kind of green chili tomatoes so i'm just going to use this because i don't have that other kind anymore and that's what you'll notice sometimes sometimes something will call for something really particular now i could also have just gone ahead and decided i want some extra tomatoes and use this with the diced onions and garlic I can do whatever I want because it's my chili <laughs> and it's your chili. So take what I do as a guideline and not necessarily what you have to do. So we're going to have extra green chilies or, and here we go. Let me let you see over above. All right. So I'm just going to put these in there. And if I wanted to, I could have pureed them. I could add more of them or less of them. I just want a little bit of that flavor in there, right? It smells really good with the green chilies. So in the recipe itself, I was gonna use a whole four ounce can of green chilies, but now I probably have two ounces in there. So I'm only gonna put two ounces in. So I just wanna give you a way to make this because who knows, I probably got those at Kroger's that we don't have any Kroger's anymore. So sometimes there are things I just can't get anymore. And you know what I'm gonna do with the other half of this container? I'm gonna put it in the freezer so I can just take it out and put it in the stew. And I'm also gonna see if I think I need more, I'll put more in there. It smells really good, you guys. I wish you could smell it. Okay, and then I want to go ahead and put it, I'm going to put about a quarter cup of nutritional yeast in here. You could use less. If you use bouillon, you might want to use even less. 
because you probably have some nutritional yeast in there. And this is really gonna give it a little more of a chickeny umami sort of flavor at very low, low cost as far as low entry point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do about a teaspoon of dried oregano. I'm gonna use my Man Rancho Bordo Mexican oregano. And look how, I love how fluffy it is. And we're gonna do salt and pepper to taste. So this is pretty freshly ground pepper. I ended up getting a lot of peppercorns, like a big giant container. So I'm gonna use a little bit less. I am gonna put some salt in here. If you don't use salt, I'm sure Joanne is reciting it right now. I'm probably gonna put in about a teaspoon-ish. But if you don't use salt and you want something neutral, you can put mix up together one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of ground celery seed and use that as your plain. So just, you don't use it all, just use whatever you want or need from that to give a little bit of bite on the tongue. And I'm gonna see over here some questions. I'm trying to see, do I have, I think I have, so since this was gonna have lime and cilantro and we don't have any, we can just use some fresh cilantro. So I'm probably gonna put in, it's probably two or three, you know what? Nah, <laughs> there's no need in saving that probably about a quarter cup of cilantro. You can leave it out if you don't like cilantro. I think it's delicious and it's good for you too. You could also choose to just add it in as a garnish too. And so like see some of those big soy curls, if I want to chop those up, I can chop them up. We could have even, if we wanted this to be more like a little ground, we could have crumbled them up a little bit more. And then, um, so with lime, my lime is not good. <laughs> so I have this stuff, these little packets of true lime, true lemon, true grapefruit. And what it is, is it's crystallized lime. It's just citric acid, lime juice, and it does have some lime oil in there for flavor. So I've been using some of this and things. If you, if your lime just isn't very juicy, sometimes, and I'm just gonna put probably, let's start with an eighth of a teaspoon. I may end up with a quarter teaspoon. And that's gonna give me some of that same lime flavor. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more. And if you find, actually, I'm gonna put this whole little packet, which is probably a quarter teaspoon. So now it's gonna have a little more of a bite to it from the lime. The lime and cilantro to me are the flavors that are up near the top. Tomato is just barely below that carrot. And then you can smell some of the chili flavors. And we're gonna taste this and decide if we want to add some more chili flavor to this. Okay, and I'll, let, I'll answer questions while we're looking at the beautiful stew. Doesn't it look nice? And so I didn't puree all the before serving ingredients. You could puree those if you wanted to, but I just wasn't feeling it today, so I didn't do it. When I'm tasting for spices, I usually try to get into the brothy part. Ooh, the lime is really good, you guys. Um, it is pretty strong. I could have gone a little less. So if you're using something like that dried lime, maybe start with half, but I like it there. I can taste my jalapeno. No, I was thinking of maybe adding some more ancho or something, but I don't think I want to. You, you could add some more cumin but I like it right there. So it's got a little hint of bite and I love jalapeno powder. Jalapeno powder is not even in this recipe, but it pairs well with brighter things like 
dried chilies or avocado, like it's amazing in guacamole or in black eyed peas. It just adds that little bit of something that's, that's nice. And you can just put a little bit in so it doesn't make that much of a bite. Okay. Yeah, and talking about organic, yeah, some, some farmers in Durham just grow without pesticides. They don't claim organic because they said it's a lot of paperwork and it's an expensive process for a small farm. Um, if that's why Rancho Gordo does it or not, I don't know, or perhaps it's hard because part of the growers are in Mexico. But I'm sure if you um, went to ranchogordo.com, it probably would explain that somewhere. And Melanie says that she read where you can add one teaspoon of baking soda to the soaking beans to help soften them. And I think that probably would work just fine. Absolutely. And sometimes in, in Mexican or Tex-Mex food, they'll use epizote, um, an herb. And in Europe, they use bay leaves. And, you know, in Asian countries, kombu, or like for macrobiotic and things like that. There's always something that makes the beans a little easier on your stomach. But the very first thing is to cook them all the way. So, and since I'm not eating this till dinner and it's 1.30, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with it just staying. It's going to stay on warm. So that's why I put those four beans back. If I was going to serve it right now, I probably would take the four beans out, get a, divvy out the servings and put it in and let it just stay on warm until I was ready to put it away. And Joanne says, since I don't know how old my beans are, I'm going to do natural pressure release. Absolutely. And if something says natural pressure release, you could always add minutes to the cooking time as well. So I've done that before. And that's why I think I added an extra minute to this. Minute or two. I always just kind of guess because, you know, the world doesn't end if I have to actually cook it some more. And especially, again, when we look here, see, it's not such, it's, it's a nice thick chili, and as I leave it on warm, if I leave the top off, it is going to get thicker and thicker, and then I would not be able to get it back up to pressure, but right now I could add a half a cup of water and get this back up to pressure pretty easily. So I hope that helps. Um, oh, and Joanne says, I think it's $40 a quarter with six to seven packages in a treat. Rancho Gordo beans are expensive. Let me assure you they are expensive. They're, you know, like you can get pintos for like a dollar, maybe two dollars at the store. It's going to be five or six dollars from Rancho Gordo. But you get to try some unusual beans. And if it fits into your budget, it's really kind of cool and fun to play with these different things. And so that's all I have to say. Oh, and Marcy's on YouTube now. Um... Oh, and that is true. You do not have to be in the bean club to order beans from Rancho Gordo. I'm sorry if I implied that. Uh, you, but what happens is sometimes bean club members will get things that are sold out in the store or that never show up in the store. That's one of the benefits of being in the bean club. And actually the barrel, was it barrel and burlap? Burlap and Barrel Spices. I did notice that they have a spice club that I'm kind of interested in um, because I had gotten some of their products through the Nourish Whole Food Plant-Based subscription box I was unboxing last year or the year before. So that was kind of cool. Um, absolutely. And so, Mary, what, where you can find this... is on plantbasedinstantpot.com. And let me just, I'll grab it real quick and put it in here. It's somewhere around wherever you are, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily easy for you to get to it real quick. And it's actually an older recipe. I want to go and do a few of my older recipes and kind of tweak them and see if, you know, there's something that should be different or that I want to explain better. Here we go. So I'm putting, um, can I put this down in the comments? Here, let me do this. This should put it in the comments everywhere, I think, if I do this. 
Okay. There we go. Yeah, so that should be perpetuating out. You guys should see that at the bottom. So there you go, Mary. And oh, no way, Joanne has been a Rancho Gordo member for two years. I remember when you were waiting a long time for that. Deborah says it looks delicious. And here, I'll put that on for those of you who are seeing and everything's changing outside. So you don't see if I can make it a little brighter or not. Ooh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Now let me just get the focus back. You can see that a little bit better. Um, Deborah says it looks delicious. Cindy says she uses True Products, and that was the lime packet that I used. Oh, yay, Kelly's here. Awesome. Love seeing you here. I see Kelly in Clubhouse all the time. She is working towards a plant-based lifestyle, and we are here to support you in that as always. And um, Joanne says she has some true products too. And Jennifer says about the organic, you can call Rancho Gordo to discuss. She prefers organic, but after speaking with them, she feels good about ordering. And here's the thing. That's what's the most important part is the last part. After I talked to them, I felt good about ordering. If you feel good about it, great. If it doesn't feel good to you, there are plenty of other places you can order things. I'm just trying to, especially when I'm using heirloom beans and hard to get beans, they're almost always going to be from Rancho Gordo, so I'm going to talk about it. But that in no way means that that's where you need to buy your beans. Sometimes I buy my beans in bulk at the Latin American Hispanic market because it's cheaper and it's easier and I'm supporting a local business. So there's always reasons to, to make the decisions for you. Okay. Oh, and Marilyn says her grandmother would soak her beans with one teaspoon of baking soda. My mom never did that, but maybe I'll have to give that a try. I don't know how much that might change cooking times which are already, you know, a little bit crazy. Yeah, and Marilyn loves the colors of the stew. Yeah, it just looks really inviting. And Joanne says she's done the baking soda when she's cooking chickpeas for hummus and for peeling the skins. And yeah, if you peel the skins, it totally, um, oh, you're awesome, Kelly. That's all I have to say. You all are all, everybody here is awesome. You guys are the best. Yeah, and, Ran and Rancho Gordo's customer service is the best too, evidently. So do you guys have any other questions or anything? I know I kind of made a big mess here, but you know, you're used to it. <laughs> I think you'll live through it. Um, I'm gonna try and do some more lives coming up in April and just get a little more stuff together. I am also doing clubhouse rooms. I don't know how often I'm gonna do them in April, but today at 2.30, I'm doing a room and we're gonna talk about adding more vegetables to your diet. If you don't know what clubhouse is, it's a, kind of a social media. It's an app that goes on your iPhone or your iPad. So it's iOS only right now. That should be changing at some point I don't know you usually need an invite or you need people who have your phone number in their contacts to be members so if you know some people who are members you might try to go ahead and grab your number and username just use your name um, and it's kind of like an in-between like a conference and a podcast an interactive podcast so it's all audio so you can be in your jammies which I love and I've just been talking a lot about vegan food, vegan recipes, and things like that. 
and I would love it if you guys wanted to come over. I do have some invites, so if I know you, because here's the thing. If you are a random stranger to me and I give you an invite and you get me kicked out of Clubhouse, I have no repercussions. <laughs> if, but if, you, if I do know you, which I think I know most of you guys who are on here, you can email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I, give me your phone number because I have to text it to your phone. So it has to be the phone, the iPhone that you're going to use to download the app with and just solemnly swear that you will be nice and kind to people there. So that I need from you, but I'm happy to get you guys some more of us over there because I think it'll be awesome. And Kelly's there and Kelly's cool. And you guys want to hang out with her. Um, Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. You're awesome. Okay, and, and Marilyn said she doesn't use the um, baking soda now. Interesting. And Marcy said it was a, the baking soda was about the beans not being so gassy. And every culture has something that they do for that. And Stephanie's saying if you don't want to consume nutritional yeast, I'd leave it out. If you wanted to, you could add in some mushroom powder or tomato powder to give it a little bit of umami. But if you don't do that either, I'd just leave it as is. You could, um, if you needed to, I would taste it and then see. Maybe you'd want to add a little more um, chili powder, a little more cumin. I would just taste it and see what's right for you. For me, I love the boost in the flavors that the nutritional yeast gives. But there is always an option. Apple! Excellent. It's good to see you. I did, I started at 1230. So I know it was kind of itching for the, you know, it was, it was pushing it for you guys on the West Coast. But since I'm doing um, Clubhouse at 230, I wanted to kind of get this done and maybe, maybe sit down and have some lunch like a normal person would do. So we'll see about that. But it's always good to see you. And Joanne, just open the Instant Pot and the beans are perfect. Much applause to you. Whenever I'm in a Zoom call, I'm always like muted doing this when someone has a win. <laughs> and yeah, kombu for gas works really well too. Bay leaves, episode. Um, there's so many, every culture has something they use all over the world. Um, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Okay, guys. Well, who else? Did anybody else end up actually cooking along? I know Joanne cooked along. Oh, awesome. You're so welcome, Stephanie. Um, and that's how we learn, right? And, and I'm a little more haphazard in the kitchen than some people are. And I started off my cookie, cooking journey at 18 when I became vegetarian. I didn't know how to cook anything. So I understand, and then when you switch from normal diet to vegetarian or normal diet to vegan, then there's a lot of new ingredients, maybe new appliances that you're dealing with, and it just takes a little time. But once you kind of get into it, the more you taste and smell, the more you're going to be happy with your end product. So I've had some soups and stews like that I've been like, I'd smell it and be like, well, I don't know. And just kind of, if you're not sure if it needs more oregano, smell the two together. And actually, that smells really good. I'm going to add some more oregano, and regular oregano, because that smelled really good. <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, and so that's why sometimes our animal body, our nose and our taste, knows more than our brain does when it comes to some of this. And that's let that be your ending guide. Because the more you tweak, the more it's gonna be yours. And I made these recipes not so that everyone can make my food, but that you can have a head start to making your own food. Okay, so every time you tweak some things, and you may make some mistakes along the way. I do. And it's okay that everything doesn't turn out perfect, but you know, 95% of all the things you make that aren't going to burn up, they're not going to be inedible, and they're still probably going to be better than that jar of spaghetti sauce and spaghetti that's your backup. And if that, for those 5% of the times, 
the spaghetti and and the jar of sauce just is going to work out fine for dinner so it's okay to experiment oh awesome thank you i think i'm i'm sad because i'm enjoying the beautiful weather from inside i'm trying to s i was thinking if i went outside with a mask if that would help my allergies but it's going to get my eyes so it's going to be very exciting I may not do a live next week. I'm going to see if I do. It will be near the end of the week. I am going to try and get back into the weekly lives. I get my second vaccine on Monday. So I'm kind of planning out some time for to not feel good. Because the first round gave me a little bit of um, inflammation. So the second one's supposed to be worse. But if for some reason I am miraculously doing well, then I might do one on Wednesday again today is tuesday yeah i don't think it's going to happen on tuesday it's probably going to be more thursday friday ish oh and cheryl says cheryl made her first kale all by herself she made greens this past weekend they were delicious i ate some of the leftovers earlier this morning so you know just give yourself some patience cheryl freaks out I freaked out when I started and it's a lot to learn all at once. That's why sometimes I think doing something in the slow cooker, doing something in the instant pot, it's a one pot meal. If I wanted to, I could have served this over quinoa or millet or rice. I could put it in a burrito. I could put it over a sweet potato or a regular baked potato. There's so many things you can do with this instead of like having like trying to make a fancy meal on th the stove cooking three or four different things at the same time so if you're new start without putting so much pressure on yourself make one thing at a time oh and joanne has her second second one on monday too um and marcy got her second ones on sunday and we are fine don't worry awesome because i you know, I am worried. <laughs> I think one of the reasons I'm I'm a little worried is just because I had more of a reaction than I expected in the first, and I got the Pfizer, so I'd be interested if if you got Pfizer or Moderna. And if you want to email me about this, Kathy Hester at Gmail, that is fine too. You do not need to broadcast your business if you if you don't want to. Um, and I'm just worried with that plus the bad allergies that I'm having. I think that's what's kind of making me nervous. But I'm also super excited to get it and thankful that I was able to get it when I did. They moved our timetable up a little bit. So, but just know if you don't hear from me in the beginning of the week, it's because I'm sleeping. And I'm going to, actually, I'm making chili. And who knows, maybe I'll go live again this week because I'm making some different stews and soups to put in the fridge or to have in the freezer. So if we don't feel good, that we can still have yummy things to eat. So that's what part of the goal is. The other part of the goal is just to hang out with you guys. Um, but anyhow, thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. Um, if you want to do me a favor, just be kind to yourself today. Do something nice for yourself, even if it's just drink enough water. Just, if you're having a rough time, Make it an easy goal, you know, and that I will eat today, that I will drink enough water. If, if you can, not having bad allergies, take a walk, get outside. And if you see somebody else, maybe try to be kind to one other person. But I'm more concerned today with you doing something nice for you. Okay, excellent. Ooh, and I got a tip. Massage my arm for 15 minutes. I did not do that the first time. So I'm excited. Now I have a tip. So you guys got what I got. So, okay. Awesome. And Susan, it's awesome to see you. Cindy, thank you. You have a nice week too. And Marcy loved the show. Okay, guys, I'm going to get ready. Um, again, Kathy Hester at gmail.com. If you have some questions or you want to join me for Clubhouse at 2.30. Okay. I'll see